Hello everyone, I'm Bra Bithra. I do large amounts of Kingdom Death discussions, Kingdom Death gameplay, Kingdom Death reviews. The Kingdom Death Monster board game is a large majority of what I do. It is one of my favorite board games, and thus I get asked quite a bit in all my videos, what are the best expansions, or of the 12 available, which ones are the best to buy? I've done a video <laughs> on the expansion reprints and everything, and I didn't, I didn't rank them. Today I'm going to be ranking them, and today I'll be joined by three other people. As again, as I've explained, I don't like to just say that my opinion is like the end-all, be-all of the discussion, right? I know that's just not true, so I try to offer, whenever I do a grand discussion of stuff, I try to get other people to join me so I can give wider like opinions on things. So I will be ranking these expansions today. I will be doing part of it. You will see my number 12 through number 1. However, I just want to stress that the Kingdom Death Monster expansions are kind of all over the place. <laughs> some add almost nothing, some add way more than everything else. They val they range in value, they range in price, they they range in like content, they range in just stuff that's usable even in the game itself. What's included in each one. It's like, for example, let's go Marvel United, right? This is the Doctor Strange expansion, right? You just get Doctor Strange here, he's in his own little box, you get his deck, and you get a mini. That's an expansion to Marvel United. This is also an expansion to Marvel United. It's, look at the size, it's like you get three Spider-Men's, and you get a villain, you get Green Goblin. Those are widely variable, right? One's very little, and one's a whole bunch. <laughs> That's what you can expect from these 12 expansions. So I wanted to go into it with an approach that I felt quantified, right? Because it's hard for me to just say that, well, when you compare this expansion that adds a whole bunch of stuff, like it gives a rule book, a thousand cards, like a whole bunch of stuff, to this expansion that gives five cards. <laughs> right? It doesn't mean that the one that gives five cards is bad, and it doesn't mean that the one that gives a thousand stuff is good. Right? It, 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 it's so... How I did it was I used a point system. Sorry, the camera went out of focus for some reason. So as I was saying, I did a point system. Point systems are you rank them, you take... You ask yourself a question about all those 12 expansions, and then you say to yourself, the best one that fits this category that I'm ranking on gets 12 points. The worst one gets one point. And then you total up, after you've asked all those categories, you total up all the points, and then the totals is how you value the 12 thing, or the 12 expansions, right? That's how I did it. So the, the questions that I asked were, does this have a lot of variety of use, right? Can you use expansion in a lot of different ways. How well it sets out to do the thing it wants to do, how much I personally use it, how much I enjoy it, and then finally, the price point, or the value. Then you total them all up, and here you go. There you go, right there. Those are my actual point values for all 12 expansions, from 12 to 1. The amount of points that I gave them. As you can see, there's a huge variety. <laughs> Number 12 gets almost no point. The most you could get was 48 points, right? Because that's 12, four questions asked, 48 points. None of those reach the entire total of 48 points, as you can see here. But you can see, there you go, there's the graph. You can see it, or not the graph, there's the range, right? That's how I rank them. Now I will start the discussion. Again, I'll be joined by three people. Thank you so much. Hey everyone, I'm Slay. Um, I recently featured on one of Brian Murphy's videos. I'm back again. I'm part of the CCG Discord. I've helped play test a bunch of content. We recently wrapped up a full campaign testing and moving on to testing some of Brian Murphy's maybe secret, not so secret projects. And I recently joined the CE team myself. Uh, Jay Richter, also known as Jay. Uh, I frequent the Landers Rain Discord a lot. I'm a Drifter Knight. I help on a bunch of stuff for writing and so on. And I'm Chaos Farce here. I've been I've developed the Harvester Worm expansion and otherwise I do a lot of playtesting on the CCG server in general. And I've recently joined the community edition team with the recent 2.6 release. 
I ranked every expansion on a 1 to 5 scale in three categories. Um, one on showdown quality and fun, um, another on the quality of the non-showdown content, and then a third category on how much it changes your game, um, which will, I suppose, factor into what order you want to purchase expansions in, and perhaps what order you want to think about them. I was completely subjective. It's purely an opinion piece. I didn't points, I didn't do anything like that, it's purely how much I like an expansion, how much I use an expansion. I personally um, ranked it based on not the value you would get out of these expansions, but my personal opinion on how much I enjoy the uh, expansions. Uh, I like to rank it based off what the content was pitched to do instead of what it actually ended up doing. So you'll see a lot of funny ones from me, but don't use my opinion as a suggestion on what to buy first. <laughs> so the way we will do this is we will start from the bottom and work our way up. And I'm going to track when everybody said when uh, everybody has set a single expansion, and then we'll spend some time talking about that single expansion. So we will keep the same order. I would start with uh, Chaos will go, then Jay will go, then Slay will go, and then I will go. And like I said, we'll keep that same order throughout the whole video. So, if you would, please, Chaos, what is your number 12? Number 12, I have green armor for its very little impact on the game. Sounds about right. Uh, Jay? Green armor, because I'm never going to finish that shit in a million years. <laughs> Sounds about right. I'm just going to go slay. Yeah, unsurprisingly for me, I've actually never played green armor before, but it's also going to be green armor. But not just because <clears throat> I think it's tedious, but more importantly, I am not a fan of the design of the gear aesthetically, either. Uh, my number 12 is actually Lonely Tree. Oh, we've got to have some fighting words. No. Well, <laughs> this 100% this boils down to the price. I, I, took val I took how much the price of an expansion is. I just legit don't use it. Like, the, it, it costs... How much does it cost? It costs $100, and I literally just use the cardboard that you get in the core game. So that that is the only reason why I put it lower than green armor i'm just on that one single factor alone mm, that's true that's fair. <laughs> that's fair enough so now i guess we'll go to number 11 chaos uh 11th i actually have the lion god that might be a controversial opinion here uh Jay. i guess i'm up next for 11 yeah uh, i've got lonely tree down there i've never pulled object of desire any time i've ever used lonely tree <laughs> man how is that possible you play so many campaigns i've seen it like multiple times for campaign I have very bad luck. <laughs> uh, for my number 11, it's the Lonely Tree as well. Mm. I think aesthetically, it's very cool as a terrain piece, but compared to all the other expansions, I have to rank it below just because it, at the end of the day, it's a tree. Uh, I do think the showdown is unique and the idea is unique, but as I said, compared to everything else, I just think it falls short. Yeah, I agree. Um, my number 11... Uh, is Lion Knight. I'll explain that in a second. <laughs> a Lion Knight? Yeah, Lion Knight is my number 11. That That's probably the most controversial of all this, I would think. My boy. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling that one being down at 11 is pretty controversial, but I'll explain it when we talk about number 10. So, okay, if you want to start us off with your number 10? Okay, well, 10th I have the Lion Knight, so <laughs> I'll join you there. Jay? Uh, I've actually got Sunstalker at 10. Ooh, oh, okay. Spicy, I know. That is pretty spicy. I think he's too easy. I think he's too easy of a That's... fight, and I don't like people sure. this time. He's a glass cannon, kills himself. I also dislike the fact that he actively kills himself. And he drops way too good gear. His arm, it's the best armor in the... Uh, we'll save that for later. <laughs> Slay, what's your number 10? Uh, my number 10 is actually Manhunter. Um, oh, wow. My Slave. thoughts is, it's a unique nemesis fight. Though his showdown is easy, which is not a problem to a lot of people. It's not a problem to me either. I'm, I don't mind if his showdown is easy. Uh, his gear is very good. I'm purely basing this on the fact that I'm not a fan of the aesthetic and the wrestling theme going on. Uh, I do like works. the idea. Yeah, but <laughs> I would love. I would have loved to see a campaign sent around the defeat condition of Manhunter. I would have thought that would go, that would have been really cool. Uh, so my number 10 is green armor. So we'll talk about green armor here. The only the reason why... So I value Lion Knight worse than green armor because the 
literally the only thing I use from Lion Knight because I dislike the fight so much, but I love the hybrid armor sets. They're like so unique and so cool from Lion Knight, but I had to rank green armor slightly ahead of it because I also like green armor is terrible for one reason, and that's what everyone else said. You're never going to finish it, and it's like impossible to, it's implemented so badly. The fact that it's only $25 and you can use bits and pieces of it is what made it better than Lion Knight for me, at least. I mean, yeah, but like armor set cards are king in this game. Yeah, I mean, I think... You... I would use Griswaldo and Fetosaurus on their own. Yes, those are the exact... Those are the, I never use Griswaldo, Fetosaurus, and the helmet. I don't have the RNG to ever make any of those pieces. Again, it's only... The fact that it's only $25, I would never... This is why I said I would never, ever... Don't take this, my ranking, as a way of purchasing order. This is just because I have all 12 expansions, and I can use this, and I can implement... I can pick and choose parts of green armor to go with the expansions I'm using. The Fetosaurus and the the helmet, I end up using those expansions that are tied to those pretty often. I would literally rather go buy a $25 New York strip steak than buy green knight armor. Uh, again, yes, I, I wouldn't put this... But like I said, I use green knight armor... <laughs> It's only 25 bucks. It's better than an Echoes of Death, dude. Echoes of Death are like 50 bucks. Yeah, fair enough. But that's the thing, right? Green Knight armor is also splashable in campaigns if you choose to use it. Like, depending on what expansions you have, you would be able to make certain pieces. Yes. So, I... yeah. I guess, oh, if you want to, because they are overpowered and, like, game warping, aren't they? Yes. It, depending on the armor, on the, the armor slash weapon. Because like, Fetostaurus <laughs> is the best shield in the game. Yeah. Probably. Yes. Again, it's implemented terribly. Green armor is... Green. I mean, we, it, we've been joking about 2 a.m. implementation, 2 a.m. thought process, and I think green armor was definitely like a 2 a.m. thought process. They got, uh... If they put everything in the campaign, they'll get a cool thing, even though it doesn't require everything. That's, again, that's the 2 a.m. thought process. It, yeah. So it says it's supposed to use everything, and it clearly doesn't. So he didn't think it through. And then even the implementation of how you get it, not very well thought about. It's just like, oh, there's a recipe on the back. Again, yeah, I agree with everyone. Green armor should be down at the bottom. If it wasn't for the fact that if if I could if I could have told myself to not include price point of Lonely Tree... I would have put Green Armor probably near the bottom. And if it wasn't for the fact that I hate Lion Knight, I despise Lion Knight, its showdown is so bad, but... Lander on my boy. I used the hybrid... <laughs> Again. <laughs> Don't purchase these in the order I'm ranking them. That's my conclusion there. Fair enough. Okay, uh, what's next, number nine? Well, Chaos, do you have anything to say about Green Armor? Um, I don't have much else to add on green armor but that hasn't been said, except I do like the miniature. But I'm not sure it's worth the price. I like the art. I like the, the vibe. The vibe is cool. It's, kind of a, it's a common Rider thing. I'm not a fan for some reason, but I am a fan of the design of Verdant Lord. But we won't talk about that today. Uh, Chaos, what is your number nine? Speak of the Lonely Tree and it shall appear. Yes. Um, it's... Only this high, I guess, suppose, because a good number of people do like it, and it is splashable. It is neat to have it show up at a random time, although... Anyway. Well, we've all we now. could talk about Lonely Tree. Everybody's mentioned it now. The only thing I don't like Lonely Tree is I never use it, and it's $100. So, I just can't... I can't even come anywhere near justifying that. I've literally never pulled it, so I have no opinions on it. <laughs> <laughs> you never use it, Brummy, for because it never shows up, or because you just don't throw it in a campaign? Uh, I just don't really throw it in the campaign because uh, I should, I'm going to try to use it with 1.6 now that they fixed it. I, I, don't, I also ranked it low because it doesn't do what it sets out to do, mainly because it doesn't make any sense from the book now that the new, the, they fixed the AI card in 1.6, so I guess that's okay, but it also used to just not do what it was supposed to. The super hair ability is really cool. The fruit is really cool. You can get a lot of cool stuff for like one spe specific survivor, but 
it's not supposed to be fought more than once. That's been confirmed. Like in the lonely tr- in the campaigns of death thing, they thought you're only supposed to be able to fight it once. But because you don't take it out of the deck and the terrain thing's still there, it can still show up afterwards. And I don't think that's supposed to be like that. But that just proves how badly it was implemented. Yeah, so. I was not aware it was only meant to be fought once, actually. I, th- oh, yeah, nor was I. <laughs> I think it is. I think it's only supposed to be fought once. I think it's supposed to pull the it's supposed to pull the train card back out, right? It doesn't say so. I know it doesn't say I so. I mean, <laughs> it's totally full of bugs, that's for sure. Like, it's a yeah. nightmarish level of typos, all, no pun intended. But it is a it is a tree. It does often have lots of bugs and insects. Oh, I didn't uh, intend that one either. <laughs> I hate myself. It's late. That was awful. <laughs> Even beyond the fact that I've literally never fought the thing, I've looked through its content, there's zero cultural impact upon your settlement from a flavor standpoint you don't there's no innovations you don't gain anything or develop anything you don't gain new insights into the world it's it's a self-contained fairy tale which is fine it's just it's a story and it is not something that affects the settlement yeah that's true um and one point I'll throw against it is that its showdown is very exploitable, and it performs a lot of kind of generic basic actions as opposed to a variety of actions. Yeah, I guess I've played it a few times, and I feel like even when playing it infrequently, like the 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 exploits feel too easy to do. It feels like even the showdown doesn't quite achieve its its intended objectives. It is very unique, though. I'll give it that. Like the showdown is. is unique, but. Yeah, I think as Chaos said, because I, I, the first time I ever played it was with him during that campaign. And I do agree after playing against it, but, you know, it's still pretty cool. Um, uh, that... Next up, I guess, is my number nine. Yes. Go for it. Uh, I got Spidechilles down there. Oh, boy. Yeah, actually, that's pretty fair. Uh, I like his cultural impact a lot. Breaks campaigns if you implement him at raw. <laughs> yep. Because you kind of need antelope for a lot of things. Yep. Uh, it also doesn't make sense the justification as to why there wouldn't be an antelope around. Uh, the idea is that they're predators and they ate all the antelope, but that's not how prey predator interactions work. Uh, I think he's a fun fight at level one. I think he's a pretty decent fight at level two, but I'll go into that more later. Yes, by Achilles. From here on now, it starts to get pretty hard. Actually, I, I like everything above at this point. But for number nine, I had Flower Knight put, put down. Um, the girl. Flower Knight is cool. <laughs> I really like Flower Knight. The gear is bad. I didn't really take that into account, though. But just flavorly, com- flavorly compared to everything else, I just don't think it's as cool, even though it is very unique. Uh, are you judging it based on 1.6? Yes. My number nine is also Spidiculees. Uh Pretty much for every reason exactly Jay said. Also the fact that it's $100. I'll never use that no many reason ever. to fight him. There's no reason to fight him. Ah. Anyway. Uh, moving on. I think we'll talk about it pretty soon here. <laughs> Chaos, what is your number eight? It is the Flower Knight. Unfortunately, it is too easy and its gear is kind of all over the place. Kind of needs a bunch of... It needs a bunch of help. Hey, my number eight is, is Lion Knight, actually. I think he's cool. I didn't think he's got a lot of character. Uh, it's just, it comes down to there's not enough cultural impact for me. Plus, I forget half of his, you know, fight mechanics. <laughs> I play solo, and that, that affects things. Oh, yeah, the roles are a lot to keep track of. Slay, what is your number eight? My number eight is Dung Beetle Knight, actually. Whoa. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a it's hot take. Knight for me. There's a few things with this expansion I don't enjoy. The calcification mechanic, I think it's cool, but I hate the feeling of getting new gear and then calcifying it, so you have to wait four years longer before you can get it back and use it again. Uh, I think it could have been implemented better. That's just personally my take on it. And the showdown is very cool, like the first few times you've done it. But once you've figured out what to do, I think it plays out very similarly. Definitely agreed on the showdown note. No, I'm last on number eight. Uh, mine's Lion God for number eight. There's there's problems with them, but if you include them, it's still fun. Lion God's, I think, the theme is there. 
it's cool. He throws stuff around, and you can explore the the bottom of it, uh, the necropolis. But there's a lot of lacking <laughs> from an expansion standpoint. Mm-hmm. So chaos. What is your number seven? All right, time to throw in this bit, Achilles. I think it's got a pretty good showdown. That is, however, grindy at level two plus if you don't have surge. But its gear is all over the place and generally not doing very well. Also, kind of needs like a bazillion house rules. Jay, what's your number seven? Flower Knight. Flower Knight's my number seven. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised. I like... Why so low? You were praising them so highly earlier. I know, that's I mean, what I mean. It's, pretty, it's kind of dead in the middle. Honestly, past Sunstalker, I like every expansion. S- Stunstalker is meh. I don't like Lonely Tree because I've never gotten it. I don't like Green Knight because I'm never going to get it. Sunstalker is meh. Spidey Lease is pretty decent. And then after that, it's just... I like everything to some extent. You do like Flower Knight. Did you judge it on 1.6? Yeah, I don't like the Vesper Team bow change at all. That's, um, no, that's fair. Would it have been higher it, without it, that change? Maybe. Honestly. I'm bad at the game and have bad RNG. <laughs> yeah, I think Flower Knight's the... Of all of them, I think Flower Knight is the one where it's fair to ask if you're judging a 1.6. Yeah. Uh, has everybody talked about Flower Knight yet? Yes. Yes, everybody has. You, that's, we can start going into it. So, I love the concept a lot. Cause it's about like addiction and like chemical dependency, and I love the aesthetic of the woods so much. I love her look. I love the flavor of her moves. I can just I can picture the Flower Knight in combat as like this kind of like Ornstein type regal knight with thrusts and, and flourishes. There's no reason to fight it. You either only fight Flower Knight or you never fight Flower Knight. It's yes. too easy even for me. And I am bad at this game and cheat a lot, but Flower Knight's too easy. The gear is either obscenely broken in some cases or completely useless the fighting arts and secret fighting arts are all way too strong so it's it's a very much an expansion of extremes i don't like the fact flower knight it's like sunstalker actually kills itself by handing out luck i think flower knight does what it sets out to do well i think the parry mechanic i think the ring the fairy ring i think all that stuff is cool it does land there's so bare minimum in the expansion what it offers It basically comes down to, do I want to use the bow this campaign? And if I don't, then you just never use Flower Knight. So I agree, there's almost no reason to fight it unless you want to use the bow. I certainly hope there will be be, uh, ways to get the replica helm and sword in COD, because those are really cool gear pieces that aren't too powerful, nor are they too weak. They really are. More comments on that eventually, but uh, yeah, very eloquent description, Jay. The resource design is cool. The showdown design is cool. I hear a lot about how the showdown breaks down as soon as you bring ranged weapons, which I haven't done myself, but I'll believe it. I can see it. It works pretty well with melee only and if the monster's stats were higher. Even the showdown's cool, but it still has its own flaws. The concept is great. Execution, not so great. Yeah, for me personally, I think the showdown needed a bit more time to get, you know, fleshed out and it feels like they just missed out some very obvious rulings even stuff like bloom is a bit odd on the targeting and it can be abused very easily it's just little things like limiting the amount of people in the flowering at a time or outside the flowering that could just really change the entire showdown for the better i guess they might have just missed out on that and didn't think about what other players would do we did some of those five years in the chest the expansion itself is quite shallow it there's definitely not that much depth to it Flower Knight was only fifty bucks, so it's it's the Under same the price range, yeah. as an Echoes of Death, and I think it's a I think the value is what made it at least make it higher on mine. I know a lot of old reviews say that it makes the game easy. Flower Knight will just make it easy. I still think that if you I think that's still fine, even with one point six. If these new expansion pre orders do adjust the bow and it goes down to the to one strength or two strength, whatever it is, I still think that those old reviews and everybody who always says it makes the game easier i still think it does 
if you're buying it just because you're having struggling with the game, I think Vesper Team Bow, even the 1.6, will still amazingly help you out. It won't carry you all the way to Gold Smoke Knight anymore, but it will still carry you all the way to Watcher. Yeah, that's true. And Acanthus Doctor. Yeah, the secret fighting arts and whatnot are... They can be a lot of fun if you want to have, like, a big power level. Uh, but anyway... Slay, what's your number seven? My number seven is Lion Knight. Uh, so Slay, yeah, you can start us off, swagger. since you since you're the last one to mention it. You can just talk about Lion Knight all you want, and then we'll... Yeah, sure. So Lion Knight is flavorfully one of my... Probably my favorite humanoid monster you can fight against in the game. I think it's very interesting, especially the way he comes in. And the uh, expansion is full of flavor. I think the biggest problem is... The story events are bad because they can get you killed after winning. The gear, in my opinion, is not a problem to me. This is my, this might be controversial, but I think that Lion Knight is one of the better Nemesis expansions because it's actually difficult, and I don't think that Nemesis expansions need to be rewarding. I feel like they should be a challenge and dared at you, and they should be there as like a a limit tester to see if you're powerful enough to continue your campaign, as compared to Manhunter. I just dislike the villain so much. <laughs> that I played the Lion Knight blind once with my brother and I think we got tired and bored halfway through the showdown and we decided to remove it from our campaign. Um, the way that you can trigger Outburst in order to completely break the Lion Knight's turn, it just shuts the whole showdown down and, and loses all the challenge. And then to make matters worse, all the incentives for even playing the showdown at all are completely wrong. Winning is winning is punished, and you should you're much better off letting a single survivor die. So, yes, from a pure story world building perspective, I love Lion Knight so much. He is great. He is such a Shakespearean theater kid, uh, which speaks to my heart as a, a Shakespearean asshole. Sphere. A theater kid i love his swagger i love his flavor i love that he has a freaking like harem of super powerful spell casters mechanically everything breaks i think it's an important thing especially as we get to uh, which we'll probably see more of as we get into our more popular expansions of how much does it impact your settlement and how much does it impact your story it is a good consideration yes lion knight got more points than it should have from me was because of the hybrid armor sets. They might become strains in COD that add to all future campaigns. I hope so, because they're cool. Brahmither, did we get your number six? Uh, no, because you're starting six. Did we get your number seven? Yeah, it was Flower Knight. That's why I said we could just talk okay. about it. Cool. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, Got my off. number seven is Flower Knight. Number six, we're at halfway. Yep. So, Chaos number six. I think I can recommend purchasing anything in my top six, and the bottom six don't quite make the cut, or they start to get, like, very conditional. Speaking of, number six, Manhunter. <laughs> a little bit too easy is the problem. I'm now trying to remember if anybody has ever died. I think there is... Yes. There's, I think Manhunter, the reason why he doesn't go super high for me is because he's kind of like Lion God. You can just draw into a card that just absolutely wrecks you if it's in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, that the turn one TPK. Oh, yeah. I love the flavor on his cards, though. It, like, the flavor throughout work, it is really good. The showdown's fun. The only monster that talks. He's the, he's yeah. the only monster that talks. Yeah, and he's got good lines, too. But Let's the showdown's... see how these look on you. <laughs> but the showdown's too easy, and the gear's a little too good. But all of it is fun, and it does change how you play the rest of the campaign, so, you know... It's in the would recommend half. My number six is Slender Man. He's better than Kingsman. I don't like his flavor <laughs> very much. That's true. That's and fair. I again with my bad RNG, I always always get stuck in a loop with this guy. <laughs> I always get stuck in a loop of he killed one survivor, sent everybody to a different corner, and then fucked off to the third corner, the fourth corner. Yes. And it does that every single turn until everybody dies of brain trauma. Oh, I had to puzzle out the solution to that once upon a time. But, uh, so I think I it is solvable. A bow. I didn't I think a it's bow solvable without a bow, but it's just really hard. And I think it took me half an hour to puzzle my way through it. I think he's, yeah, we'll talk about him later, I'm sure. Much, much later, I'm sure. Yeah, I think 
Uh, depending on what Slay says right now, I think we're about to talk about one more expansion. Slay, what's your number six? Uh, my number six is actually Golem. Never mind. Right. <laughs> I'm, Neil. Absolutely. I'm not a big fan of Golem, to be honest. Uh, even from a gameplay perspective, I think a lot of people don't like his uh, level 2 showdown, including myself. That's I true. I'm not a fan of his level 2 showdown. Oh, uh, wait. Aftermath is, uh, not the showdown, but the aftermath. That's, yeah. Even in terms of aesthetic, I think it's okay. It's, it's not my... Everyone says he's like one of the best because he's super replayable, but I even don't like the fact that his gear power creeps White Lion. I think it's very on par with weapon crafter level weapons. And it makes the early game quite easy, in my opinion. I like his potion mechanic, but I think there's only one good potion. That's I don't true. like his settlement event. The settlement event is quite nasty. Which one? Oh, you mean just the Gorm, the Gorm climate? General? Yes. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Not yeah. that again. Oh, God. Yeah, bad one. Yeah, we, we went like five years and then we uh, <clears throat> cheated. Yep. It's flavorful. <laughs> just five? I thought we went, I think we went to like 12 or something and then... Okay, maybe it was uh, anyway. It was, a long it, time. it was a lot of we lost a lot of innovations of that. Yeah, you know, I think his um, I think his story event is like uh, deceptively bad as well for adding it to year one. Yes, it is for adding hovel into your range. Hovel deniers versus me, the Chad no, hovel no, I, enjoyer. I don't think hovel's bad. I think it's just it's just I think it's a dangerous bad, thing because a lot of yeah, people recommend good. that you add Gorm. As soon as you buy the game, I've heard people say that you the the game can't even be played without Gorm, and I think that's, that's I don't agree with that. That's what I was gonna say. I don't I don't agree with that. I think Gorm is great. I think it slots in really well as a node one, but I think it, that recommendation that it that you use it like even as a first time player, I don't know. I think I think adding it year one right away. I think it's I think it's not great. Could leave a bad taste in people's mouth. It's not my one I would recommend for a first playthrough. That, Bro, was, that was surprising. I wasn't expecting Gorm's the six. So, yeah. um, I do like Gorm. Uh, uh, my so number six like is, is also Manhunter for me. Uh, Chaos, what is your number five? Number five for me is the Gorm. It does suffer from all the problems previously mentioned, but the Wisdom Potion is a breath of fresh air, um, and it does provide early game variety for people who want that, and I've had players who want that. Learning the showdown the first time is pretty cool. Uh, it does get a little predictable after that. It's got a good design, although the exact effect you might argue about for changing how you hunt it from various levels. But yeah, if you have to fight like four level one Gorms because your partners don't like lions, yeah, they get a little same. If you're only hunting Gorm, its resource distribution is a little much. It's a little bit skewed. Oh yeah, I was going to say that. We'll Towards about organs. That. The costs are very expensive. With armor especially. I was just going to say, I really like seeing the full complete life cycle of the Gorm. I think that's a very nice touch. Yeah, all the showdowns are quite different, actually, from level 1 to 3, which is a very good part of it. Also, it's an angry anglerfish mammoth baby. It's like the, bolt, the most KDMS monster. My number 5, I think we're, I think this is everybody now, uh, Lion God is my number 5. I, I love his flavor and I love his concept a lot. I like a lot the idea of a settlement that balances hunting with dungeon delving. I think it's a great cultural differentiation from campaign to campaign that you can throw in that you're not always just you know tracking monsters sometimes that you're dumpster diving in these ancient cities and ruins and stuff i like the lore of the silver city a lot i like his design frankly his mini's cool even though it's the only piece of plastic there i think his gear is very interesting it's a fresh as a breath of fresh air compared to standard uh sediment location based uh quarries and it's better executed by a, a wide margin than flower knight as far as alternate uh gear acquisition goes i love love his fighting arts i think they're great i think all of his fighting arts are great i like langan a lot and he's the only node for nemesis uh quarry right now so that helps he has problems which i'm sure you'll all lay out right now <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you know what's? I was wrong. Slay has not mentioned it. I was gonna say I haven't mentioned Lion God yet. Oh shoot! I'm sorry. No, it's uh. uh no, it's we... Well, for my number five, my number five is uh, a Slender Man. Actually, the fight is difficult, which I like. I enjoy the difficult fights in this game. He has gear, which is pretty cool. Uh, even if he didn't have gear, I think it'd still be cool. But 
the gear he does have is also very cool if not some of them maybe you know game breaking but they're pretty cool gear in general all of them even the ones that don't get used a lot i can still see being used like in very niche fields so it's all pretty cool he showed and it's also interesting it's a little bit like speedy where you have to collect the resources as part of the showdown I like the way he turns up into the showdown. It's very uh, into the settlement. It's very memorable. It is. That's for sure. The first time, likely. Mm -hmm. It's very and the art is amazing. Like, I think we all know what I'm talking about. That the story event that he shows up. The art is very cool. Yes. Uh, it's already here. Is one of the best intros. I love how he can get added to settlement events. Uh, into settlements. What I don't like, which people may not agree with, is. When you roll the roll and you get forced to fight him straight away. Yeah, I wish you added oh, him to God. like the next couple of years or something so you could prepare a little. But when you have to fight him straight away, it's it's a little scary. And Slenderman's also my number five, so um I just mm -hmm. did a big review on Slenderman, so I don't really talk about it. um I don't know. Chaos, what is your number four? We did get your number five, right? Yeah, it was Slenderman also. Oh okay. That's why I cool. that's why I jumped uh -huh. in Slay was talking about it. Okay, well, we'll wrap it up then. Uh, my number four is also Slenderman. So oh, now okay. we've got some hey. so, here's the, so say what you like about it, but I do want to talk about the negatives of Slenderman. Sure. Um, I'll just, on top of the other points mentioned, I'll note that I really like his theme. Um, I like the whole memory manipulation aspect, and it plays nicely into all the story events. He's got a good variety of AI cards, too, I think. My main reason I'm not a humongous fan. Uh, is because I don't like the fact that he makes the settlement have an ever-present air of dread. He can show up whenever, and there's going to be like stories passed down of the creeping horror, and he just adds like a layer of gloom to the otherwise rather cozy settlement that I'm not a huge fan of. I don't like that in my settlement's culture. I know that's stupid and petty, but again, I have an overactive imagination. I can say I can't think of any major negatives from my side, but I feel like I know what Ramirez is going to talk about, to be honest. Well, you can try to guess. Uh, There's two of them. I know I know I'm... I'm Katana, plus... It's, it's going to be the rulings and the wordings on some... Well, one uh, of them. Yeah. We yeah. Could, if you want, it's, it's glue, <laughs> you man. You talk about it a lot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that is one of them. And it's not so much the wording. Like, the wording is also bad, but... It just, I, I don't, I, I literally don't understand what's even being thought about with Gloom Man. Even if, even the wording as is, why you would ever want to make it so you can't be targeted in a game that uses an AI deck that literally needs to target someone or the game falls apart, why you would make something where you cannot be targeted. Welcome to Gloom Man, the best secret fighting art in the game, besides maybe True Blade. But the, the real one was the level three. What do you guys think about the level three fight? I've never beaten him level three. <laughs> I neither have I. I think I fought him once and beat him, um, and I don't think I saw anything particularly different there, but we had a really powerful settlement. Uh, specifically, the level 3 has a trait that if you hit 15 insanity, you die. Yeah, we didn't have a problem with that. He does a lot of damage at level 3. He does a lot of damage at level 3. Uh, and I, when I play KDM, I only get hit in like one hit location over and over and over again. <laughs> Of all the monsters, I think Slenderman and, and Lion God, but Lion God not for a good reason. Slenderman for a good reason, but that you need to know how to use uh, survival opportunities. Yeah, that's true. I've heard good tips if you use survival opportunities correctly there. I haven't even done that myself. I think that is, that is the best thing about Slenderman. I think his fight is absolutely amazing for that reason. Slay, like, what's your opinion on the level 3? Did you run into that where you can just die when you have 15 insanity? Yeah, that's... Uh... It's tough, right? It's, it really makes it a lot harder, that that showdown in particular. Um, I have I have beat a level 3 Slenderman only once before, and yeah, it was very hard. It was quite difficult. Yeah, I think secondary death conditions are really neat. I just don't like the fact you can just roll into it from brain trauma. Uh, so that was Chaos's number 4. Jay, what's your number 4? My number 4 is Dragon King. Ooh, those fighting words. But I adore Lion King, uh, Dragon King, rather. I think... Like my top five are all sh are all expansions I love 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 love. It's something that I will almost always include. All right, fighting words rescinded. Was well, Sunday Man Chaos is full? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it was really high. Everybody had it. It's four, five, six. 
Was, I mean, no one else. We didn't go lower than six, didn't go higher than four. That's pretty much what I expected. Slate, what is your number four? Oh, my number four is Sunstalker. I love the showdown. One of my favorite showdowns, I think. The campaign's pretty cool. No, I, I, I'll give the camp. The campaign's really cool, actually, with the, the whole theme of the campaign. Not wearing heavy armor, being under the sun, and trying to protect the Sunstalker is very cool. The gear and armor is amazing. Like, most of them are good. I think nearly all of them are good. And katana proficiency is... It's a nice add. That's splashable. I guess. Not really, but yeah. It doesn't synergize well with any katana. <laughs> that, is an, that is a weird thing. It is weird, but I, I, I think I'll give it points for adding proficiency to the game. Even if they didn't do it well. Fair enough. Okay, so my number four is also Dragon King. Hey. Um, and it is my number four for a lot of the same exact reasons. Uh, this one scored really high on, on doing what it wants, doing what it intends to do. And Dragon King is super strong in its story and what it adds. Like, Dragon King got the max points. So I, uh, for mine, I gave it out as 12, right? So the best, the best of the twelve expansions got a twelve when it was the best at doing this, and Dragon King was the best at storytelling, and the best for money per value because you also get the Tyrant, which is a unique nemesis to that. So it, it got two twelves. It got two perfect scores for story and for value for money. Dragon King, Chad, stay winning. Chaos. What is your number three? For me, it's the Dung Beetle Knight. We'll save all the discussions for probably all. Maybe all at once. Alright. What is your number three, Jay? Gorm is my number three. Anything you want to say about Gorm? Or want to save it? Ah, uh, he's fucking ugly. <laughs> it's, yeah. That is and true. That's all I'm going to say for now. No, I, I do agree. I think, well, of all of them, I will say Gorm is the most tasteful of Pust's artist's decision. When it comes Worm to Worm is literally my least favorite miniature, and he's still in my top three. <laughs> I think he's the most tasteful of all of them. Uh, I was just talking about this. I would agree with this. what you're saying. It is very tasteful. There's a lot of them, <laughs> uh, and it looks like Wave Four might be going a little bit less tasteful with its stuff. So I wish Gorm. I wish Gorm was the uh, the bar for how to do his artistic choices. <laughs> very At least tasteful. Like anyway. Slay. Hi. Yeah, I think. Yes. I think it does those things. Like I said, it, it adds science to them and stuff with the ammonia mm -hmm. and how you get it. it. It's very tasteful about that stuff. Uh, I wish Frog Dog yeah. did that. Well, he's got like drugs. Oh boy, Frog Dog. <laughs> <laughs> he's got no, we're not going to talk about that. But I love yeah, we're not going to talk about that. But uh, Slay, what is your three number three? Is Bidicules. Ridiculous. Now we can Very talk. Right, no. Slay gets his his moment. <laughs> I what love the, the design of Spidicles as like the puppeteer monster. Especially his intro story event is amazing. His showdown art is amazing. The hunt events where he like tries to trick the survivors by using the puppet. I think like he's one of the more intelligent monsters in KDM, which is very cool to me. I love the Abyssal Woods. I mean I'll put Flower Knight and Dung Beetle Knight pretty low, but it, like the Abyssal Woods is very cool, and I feel like Spidicles is like near nearby the Abyssal Woods. I think his showdown is very unique, right? It's one of two showdowns that have minions, but it's more more of a minion fight than Sunstalker, that's for sure. And with the addition of having to gather like from his different nests and like the risk you take in opening nests, I think there's a lot of thought process in the fight. Especially there's like there's there's just moments where. You're getting overwhelmed, but you know you you aren't gonna make it. So sometimes the best decision is just to try and kill Spidicles. And I know for for our campaign, we've had many very desperate situations against Spidicles where it came down to the wire, and those were very memorable fights to me. Even though they were slogs, a lot of them were slogs. I really enjoyed fighting Spidicles during our campaign. I think Spidey does a few things really, really well. It does do a lot of things well, and a lot of things very bad. I think he has the best hunt events of any quarry in the entire game, barring maybe Dragon King. Dragon King, yeah, I was going to say. So probably like the second best hunt events of any, any quarry. And I think his weapons specifically are really cool. I think he has really cool weapons. The rest of his gear 
sucks. Yeah. The aesthetics are so nice. The aesthetics are great. I love his aesthetics. I love his vibe. I love the... I do like his cultural impact quite a lot. There is no reason to fight Spidegillies. Like, you have to... It's basically, you're taking an L for a lantern year, and you're not going to be building anything besides maybe something from the Spidegillies silk mill. I think this is very true. If you play with Spidegillies, whether you add Spidegillies or Gorm will decide whether you're playing on hard mode or easy mode. And for me, personally... After you played a few campaigns, it's I think it's okay to be playing on hard mode and trying out like Spidigly's like shitty underpowered gear compared to Gorm's like four strength deadly ranged weapons that are like, you know, they'll destroy the early game very easily. If you play with Spidigly, it makes the game a lot harder. I, I would never ever play with Spidigly's without Antelope. I think Antelope is yes. ne necessary for uh, Kingdom of Death to work, to function. Yes. And also, yeah. Taken sucks. Yeah, uh, we'll yeah. talk. Taken's just so weird. I'll just note that we throw in a lot of homebrew for the Spidey Gillies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it needs it. That is true. I get the concept. I don't understand. I don't. What do you, what do you think? What, how do you, what do you get from it? Well, I mean, because Spidey Gillies are smart and they, uh, uh, they pair up and, and they do little spider kisses I get, but... and they're like, man, you killed my husband. I'm gonna take you, and then you have to hunt down the the wife spider. Which oh, is like it, how the opposite of how spiders are in real life. I mean, if that's what it is, then it actually makes a little bit more sense. But uh, that's not what I get from the <laughs> reading there. That's no, that's not what I get from. What do you get from it? No, you know what? I have I never got a clear idea of who was doing the taking, besides <laughs> some other spidercules for some reason, because life is terrible. Yeah, their mate. I mean, their mate honestly makes a lot more sense than random other Spidicules that it conveniently shows up. So, uh, yeah, I'll give you that. That makes more sense. But I feel like that's not implied in the how the effect works itself. Not much to say. Taken's pretty bad. Taken's bad. Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> you have you basically have to fight an even number of Spidicules in a campaign with only thirty yeah. lantern years. Yeah, it's pretty really bad, unfortunately. Yeah, I think it's just to represent the whole idea of them being intelligent and taking people, but yeah. the timing is atrocious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happens if there's only one survivor left at the end of the showdown? You're just doomed. Yeah, you and, you, and you still win, because the timing is so messed up. You still get all the resources. One thing I really like about this particular showdown is just the how the AI cards are distributed with the um the moods oh it's very flavorful it's very flavorful oh yeah just all a lot of the basic cards are your standard moves which also tend to make it run away and then all of the advanced ones are your moods but that also bring it back in so you also have this very strong hit and run style where the showdown designer has a lot of control over the distribution of its behaviors i don't i agree i don't think it's a bad expansion i think it's on the cusp of being good like really good mm. If, it is. It is. If it was implemented better, if you ignore the implementation and you just house rule everything away, or you just it, basically, then you also have to fix all the fucking affinities. Yeah. Yep. The level, the armor being level three, the turban, right? Is it the turban that's level three locked? Yep. Speedy kills is on the cusp of being great. I'll so. be good at least. Uh, Bra, mm -hmm. what's your level three? You're uh. Uh, rank three. Uh, my is Sunstalker. Uh, it scored exactly the same as Dragon King. It's because it comes with a campaign. The armor set is awesome. The qu the fact that it is uh, a quarry as well. Also, Sunstalker is the best bow in the game, which is the Sunshark bow. It's a real cool bow. <laughs> That's it's a best, really cool yeah. bow. <laughs> Melee bow is really cool. So that is that. Is that. Uh, the quiver thing is cool too. Um, I will also say Sunstalker does a really cool a new mechanic, the fishing. It's cool. Mm -hmm. fishing is good. I like the fishing a lot, yeah. Because a fishing minigame makes any game 40% better. Yeah, I think just the fact that you get, like Slay was saying, that it's got katana proficiency and stuff, it puts it on par. Like The, the fact that Tyrant is in Dragon King along with the whole campaign and everything. 
but Sunstalker balances out that with all the other cool stuff it adds to its campaign, like fishing and stuff. So it's really cool. It's really mm. unique. Uh, we are on. Have to... we all mentioned Sunstalker or not yet? We have not all mentioned Sunstalker. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe chaos. What is your number two? Sunstalker. What do you know? <laughs> hey. Now we have all mentioned Sunstalker. Uh, so I'm chaos, you can go the ahead. only one who doesn't like it. <laughs> it's got a cool showdown. I do wonder about the longevity of it, perhaps. And yes, I've definitely heard the glass cannon complaints before. Um, I do wonder if the gear is perhaps overpowered. The campaign's cool. Um, it's a nice break from everything else. Um, I just like it a little bit less than the Dragon King. Uh, okay, Jay. I had well, I'm very surprised. Jay oh, had like, the lowest. Mechanical issues, I actually do have a couple with Sunstarker. Besides for the I killing am... itself? The killing itself, the fact that it has minions for no good reason, they f the shadows feel absolutely tacked on. I think his quarry secret fighting art is mad best. I think his gear is way over it blows every other uh quarries uh um like danger to reward ratio out of the water it's it's gear is so strong it's disgusting i just don't like his mini very much i think he's gross i i tend to gravitate more towards the cool kdm stuff rather than the gross kdm stuff I do not like People of the Sun. I get it. It's a Japanese tragedy. And puts a weeaboo. There is no katana in Sunstalker. <laughs> I guess you're supposed to get the rainbow katana from the Phoenix, but... I guess it is a core quarry's only campaign because all their gear uses core quarry resources. I just... I have a lot of issues with Sunstalker that I can't really reconcile and his gear's only going to get stronger in COD that for is, some I do agree with that. God reason. I have no idea why they said they're buffing it. And as I said with Sunstalker, it really is nice that it is a, that you could just buy one expansion and maybe and have it would have such an effect on your game. And yes, I agree with you. It is very core only heavy when you use it as a quarry, but I saw that as like a kind of a, a value, good value. Yes, it, it adds the campaign. I just don't like that campaign very much. Well, I, I meant when you use it as a quarry and people of a lantern, it depends on people of a lantern. Not fair enough, fair enough. I think I don't really disagree with some of the points you made. Um, I think the shadows are very well thought out, actually. I feel like they... I think they're there to take up spaces so that your survivors can't hide in the shadows of the terrain, like, at some points of the fight. They're, like, definitely there to help uh, areas because they do spawn in those shadows so sometimes when you try to hide in the shadows you can't because the shadows are there i actually don't think the gear is overpowered what i do think is the other quarry aka dragon king his gear is underpowered i think his gear should be as good as sunstalker's but i don't think sunstalker's gear is overpowered his weapons might not be where he shines besides the sun sun shark bow but his utility gear is like S tier and his armor is triple S tier. I think his utility gear is good just because it's good utility gear and there's not a lot of that in the game. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to see it, I think. Yeah, like I said, it, it, it has high value for what you get for the money and what's included and the amount of versatility it has. There's multiple. We'll say his cultural impact is really cool as a quarry, adding like fishing to the settlement's repertoire. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff. Um, all right, Slay, what is your number two? You skipped my number I think it's two. Jay, oh no, so, yeah. What's? Oh, I thought Jay might as well mention on soccer. Oh yeah, no, it is Jay. You're number two. Let me tell you something, brother. Yeah. You're about to feel a world of pain. Oh yeah, brother. We're going down to the tombstone. I really like Manhunter. Manhunter is really cool. <laughs> Everybody has now mentioned Manhunter. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Jay. What do you like the best about Manhunter? Uh, his fight is awesome and super flavorful. Uh, he has so much personality because he's the only monster that talks and it's like an old Wild West shootout mixed with the WWE match. Uh, he has a fucking gun and that's hilarious. And it's called Gun Action. I like his cultural impact a lot. Unlike Slender Man, which is an omnipresent terror that can never be solved, the settlement 
actively builds up their defenses and technologies to combat the Manhunter. You get the war room, you get the tool belt, you get to develop liquor. It's the only way that you can develop alcohol in this game. In fucking Tombstone Survivors, he's the best. I and he makes say. whips good. And also, the pseudo traps are really fun. I actually really like Bottomless Pit and uh, the stakes. Oh uh, yeah, the changing hit location deck is pretty cool. And you can crit his balls. <laughs> I like mm-hmm. Manhunter a lot, a lot, a lot. Certainly hope Cut does not make him into a butcher replacer, or heck, leaves the option to make to leave him a, a special nemesis. I don't think there's anything negative about him apart from the fact that he's easy, which is not. It's not a negative. It's. But when people say that if you want an easier campaign, you should get Flower Knight. I actually think Manhunter is one of the um, expansions that make campaign easier as well. Just because you get four extra showdowns, I you get the Lantern, know. which is very, very powerful. Like, oh, the Lantern is so good. The Lantern I is super lantern. powerful. Yep. It's actually crazy how good it is. Yes, I 100% agree. That, was all, that would be my... Uh, again, not a negative, though. No, I don't think there's anything against Manhunter. That's why I didn't hold it against him specifically. I... He does make the game a lot easier because all that stuff, settlement, a lot, so much of that stuff that he adds, it just makes everything so much easier. But the thing that I love is the tool belt. Oh my gosh, I love tool belt. More things should should do what tool belt does. Look to tool make unconventional completely weapons. Completely changes your, yes. your play style. Yes. Unlocks new builds, yeah. My love for beef jerky Randy Savage is great and vast. And I somehow always crit his hat. All right, Slay, so now you're number two. Okay, my number two is Dragon King. I suspect we'll be talking about it soon, actually. Yes, so I'll reserve my thoughts. Yeah. Uh, definitely will be. I'll just. My number two is Deep Dumbbell Lane. So let's go with Chaos. What's your number one? It is the Dragon King. He I just has it. a super elegant showdown. The real thing that's pulling the expansion down is the gear balance. In which direction? You think it's overpowered or weak? It's just a bit underpowered. The campaign is probably the better of the two between Sunstalker and Dragon King, in my opinion. I agree. I do not like Super Survivors, but the Constellation Survivors is actually, I think, the best variant of Super Survivors. They're very interesting. And the little mini game you have to go through to like get them, going through that bingo thing. It's really fun, actually. It, it makes for a bit of a different showdown. I mean, a different uh, campaign experience where you're actually tutoring. It's like, it's like green armor, right? But like not as tedious. I'm not a huge fan of the Tyrant fight, um, and I like his gear's abilities a lot. I hate the affinities on his gear. It's very true. You're not going to activate everything. It's very difficult. You yeah. cannot activate it. You cannot activate the scythe while using a full Dragon King armor set, which is stupid. But back to the Tyrant quick. I think the Tyrant... It's so unique. I don't think I don't think the story would be as strong without Tyrant. Do you think if you if if Tyrant wasn't included in the campaign, would you? I would think it'd be. I think it would hurt the campaign overall. No, absolutely. I can understand the value of Tyrant. I just don't like his fight very much. Yeah, I think it's very. I think it's very cool. The only thing I dislike about it was that there's no way of using him outside of it, and I get that because he's so tied in the story. I don't want to spoil everything, but. It would have just been nice to have some, just even if you could have do a one shot or like the Wanderer system maybe coming up, just some way you could at least maybe fight Tyrant. Man, the Tyrant has such good flavor in some of his locations. If you uh, if you played it, you'll know what I mean. All right, so now back to the actual Dragon King, but I, I just didn't want to let Tyrant fall on the, by the wayside. Also, he said not to love, man. Dragon King has cool showdown, cool hunt events. He's uh, the best Iron Farm in the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah but... that is also that. It, well, he generates he generates cover for his meltdown in the super elegant way, and yeah. his targeting is simple cool. and also difficult to work with, which is good at that difficulty level. Um, it's just super elegant all around. It got, has a lot of variety and a lot of positioning things. It's it's fantastic. When mm. you attack a monster, it affects all the survivors nearby. Like it, it, Every single part, just 10 out of 10. I'd like it if the Dragon King had a legendary version, just to be, just to have something even, a bit more difficult in the end game, because it doesn't yeah, quite get there. yeah a purple and green one. Do you th- here's that's one thing. Do you think he's the easiest finale, or whatever they're calling it? Uh, it's not fin- finales technically watcher, right? I remember it being. I mean, yeah, it was fairly easy, but I 
went with some friends and we fought him blind as a finale and you know got a, got a couple things wrong and some star survivors died we still doubled yeah. his life anyway but still yeah, see, yeah the only negative has got to be the gear i think gear i mean the dragon bite bolts are great do you think it's the gear but, or just the affinities I'm, I'm willing to say it's just the affinities it's no, just it's, the it's not just the affinities like if you compare the gear to sunstalker gear i'm talking about the weapons now the weapons are very uh, yeah, low. Yeah. Okay, okay yeah. the blast shield is bad. Blast shield is bad. The, the blast sword is bad as well. Blast sword the is bad. The knife are has low strength. Chakram's talent strength. knife isn't even a knife. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of things that are wrong with the gear. Like it's not just the affinities. It needs to. Chakram's mad. Yeah. The dragon bite bolt is good. Uh, the shielded quiver isn't bad, actually. Uh, the nuclear. Yeah, the quiver is good. Quiver is probably one of the better gears, actually. The nuclear weapons are good if they had better affinities. Help get some constellation survivors clinging misted over into a people of the lantern. Yeah, that is interesting. Clinging mist is interesting, especially when you come from stars. All right, J number one. I'm uh, DBK. DBK is my favorite expansion. Pinball wizard. <laughs> All right, everybody has now mentioned DBK. So J, start us off on DBK. Uh, his fight is super fun. Uh, he's the he's just about the only fight in the game where I'm like I'm losing. This is awesome. He's so hard, but he feels fair. His ball is cool and unique. He gives you so much shit. There's so much rewards, and it's like but it's balanced with his really difficult fight. I actually I love of course his cultural impact. He's the only way to get agriculture. Agriculture in it itself is really fun. Uh, I think Calcified is a great uh, foil to Oxidation, actually. More late-game options, which is always fun. I love his design. He's super cool and just weird enough. He's, he's, I like him. He's cool. He's a common writer. <laughs> yeah, I think I already talked about like why I rated it an 8. Um, he's good. Uh, don't get me wrong. He's not bad or anything. He's good. I What I mentioned was I didn't like Calcification because... I hate how you get new gear and then you got to wait four more years to get it again. I know it's an option, but most people will calcify it as soon as you can get it, just because the earlier you can get it back, the faster you can reap the rewards. Like something with like oxidation is you have the gear, you use it, you fight with like the basic lantern gear for a long time. Then after you defeat the watcher, you get the option to oxidize it and you get it instantly, which is your upgrade. Whereas you never really use the pre-calcified versions of the gear. The showdown is pretty worked out i don't think it changes much between level one and two i, I think i know that. some people just go for level two like some people skip level one and just do level two because it doesn't change that much i will agree with that i will say this the biggest negative about dung beat online is the level three is just ridiculous <laughs> i actually haven't done a three so i can't comment on it level three is stupid uh it's, it's it is but, stupid uh, the old master is more stupid <laughs> yeah we could talk about that but yeah, I'll also throw in that, like, it might be really difficult to build the full rolling armor set, but it's actually, like, really fun. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it, you could piecemeal it. Works really you well can, but, armor. like, I mean, the set bonus is fun. Um, oh, yeah. You probably don't need it, but... <laughs> uh, Digging, it Digging Claw is absolutely awesome. Digging Claw is great. It's the best guitars in the game. Calcified, specifically. I will have to agree that, like, the, the showdown... Yeah, the AI cards can get samey just because you'll shut down a lot of them if you play it right. So Pretty you... much basic action every turn, except for the occasional. What's the one where you're when you're not when he's not with his ball? He just he kills everyone's legs. Uh, Master something. Genius architect. Genius architect. Yeah. Otherwise, that it's mostly basic action card. every turn. The hit location design is real nice, though. I think. Yeah, the, oh, yeah, the sentry carapaces are a cool idea. Yep. It's so cool. The Dung Beetle is really cool. I think Dung Beetle is one of the stronger yeah. ones. He has unique rewards that aren't just resources. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Like the the Caustic Dung, the Skep, uh, he, he drops the Juggernaut Sword, uh, the Hidden Red Gem, a bunch of Fighting Arts and or Iron. He hands out, he gives you unique, cool stuff for fighting him. He's just so flavorful, such a character. You know what I mean? 
the old master is my favorite story in kingdom death the fight is stupid and i've never beaten him it's just super sad that there were so many typos and so many bad qa <laughs> other than That's that it's true. Great. yeah <laughs> The, the the it just suffers from hubris it's the only thing that's bad about it just I, I just assume they must have thought it was perfect what's his baby that's that's what I mean that's why I think he just is, I, there wasn't I don't think someone else I don't know but there's a lot of very obvious missteps uh 1.6 cleaned it up so you don't have to worry about it now uh so <laughs> Uh, I know what's about to happen, so Slay, what's your number one? Yes, it is me. My number one is Lion God. I love Lion God. Like, I love the design of the monster. I love the introduction of the, the new biome, the Silver City and all that. I love the hunt event. Hunt event is, the hunt events are great. Like, everyone's talking about how good the hunt for Dragon King is. But I think all of Lion God's hunt events are very mysterious and very interesting. No, oh yeah. my god, it's great. He has crazy hunt events. It's pretty cool. The showdown, I don't know, this might be controversial. I know Chaos doesn't like the showdown. Well, I think the showdown is very cool. It is the amount of terrain in the showdown and how he hefts terrain around makes it very interactive. I like I like what they were trying to do with the idea of improving like White Lion gear. Like I thought this was very cool. Because, like, Gorm has Regen Suit, which is meant to improve or take the armor to late game. I don't know if it achieves it, but yeah. This is trying to, like, push Y Line armor into, like, a late game armor set, which is really cool. I think the Knowledge Worm is a very cool story. I think Necromancer is a cool fighting art. I think Spelunking during the fight and during the showdown is, like, really cool. And the actual story events for getting the gear are very interesting. And the way you get the gear themselves is very interesting. The only downside I would say is... I mean, it's not even a downside. The gear is very... What's the word? It's very niche. Like, you wouldn't use it in every build. And that goes for all the gear he has. Except for, like, Necromass Eye. And also, he's... The gear that you receive from the different levels of your showdown are... Like, they're not in the right order. It's, it's kind of weird. That is my like, biggest complaint. Yeah. That's the biggest complaint, right? Yeah, Lion God's awesome. I like him a lot more now that i've realized that you're supposed to run away from the fight uh he gives you a, a buff to running away actually on you know one of his uh hunt events and his defeat uh is actually positive so if you can get away with all your survivors and then you also get lights in the sky and all the relics that you acquired i like him a lot um he was my number f five five, yeah. five. He's awesome. Like I said, I like the uh, relic hunting aspect as a foil to the hunting. I like the Silver City a lot. I like Lore a lot. He's solid. I just have had a long, bad string of luck with Lion God to where I always pull all of his really rough moods on turn one. So Chaos had it at 11. Do you want to go first, Chaos, or do you want me to go first? I, I'm very, I have very specific things. I have two very specific things. Uh, I can very quickly note, um, my problems with Lion God, I guess, come down to, yeah, you can kind of get all of the good gear from the level one, um, and I think a lot of the gear is almost maybe too niche, I can't see it fitting in most builds. I just, I think my biggest thing philosophically is I don't like that the showdown, the goal of the showdown is to prevent the Lion God from doing anything. There's a lot of dash or die mechanics in there. Um, it's like the game is telling you, okay, here's how to play, and you don't have a ton of options. Follow these rules or die instantly is kind of the deal there. Lion God specifically gets more hurt by 1.5 than anything else, and that is because you want to fight the level 1, but it's not very easy, and it doesn't even introduce itself to level to Lantern Year 12, so you only get, like, either you're going to push back Watcher... In 1.5 or you're only going to get like four or five years to fight to level one and if you don't do it then then you just lose out on the best rewards because as slay said the rewards are totally jank they're messed up i don't understand the level three reward the statue is is awful but i think that just leaves you bro what's your number one um well my number one's gorm because i think a lot of people 
play a lot of the. I know I play a lot of the the early game, and the Gorm is great for playing it early game, and then the variety of Gorm. I find myself using it a lot. It adds an early game great or grand weapon. So if I ever want to play a campaign, I can use Ribblade to start training up grand weapon. It has early game shield you can get like right away, and then you can get start training shield. It has the good axe to start training up axe. And it also has an actual good sword. Just, it's like, if I want to play a game and I want to use, or I want to play a campaign and I want to use weapon types that aren't spear, bow, and, uh, well, spear, bow, axe, and what's the other one from uh, Antelope? Uh, Qatar, the Beast Knuckle. Then I use Gorm to get it started, to get it off the ground. So that's why Gorm's number one for me, just because... I can look at it and I can say I want to go down this path early and I want to try this new way. I'm not saying that Gorm's great throughout the whole campaign. Black Sword's the only reason why you'd ever really want to take it late game. But just from the sheer fact that you can base a whole campaign around the first five years just so you can get those weapon proficiencies off the ground is why I think Gorm's great. The resource distribution makes it a bit hard to get some of his armor. It's actually quite difficult to get his armor on top of... Um gorm climb it because there's always a chance to just lose the hide and it's hard to stock up on it i do agree i've used gorm probably in seven six or seven full campaigns now and i've probably only made the, mm. the armor once the level two showdown has a aftermath which is not my favorite you can lose movement out of it the level three is very cool and like i said i think there really is only one like very useful potion but yeah Wisdom Potion does change up the game a lot. It's quite a nice option to have. Um, I did mention the weapons I think are too overtuned. They are quite powerful for level 1 monster. I agree with that. But not much other than that, I think is a pretty good play. Yeah, I agree. They're, they're, probably, they're probably too much. I think I just like the fact that you... I think I just find value in the fact that you can at least start those proficiencies early game. And you can shape a whole campaign around it. Like, it just, the viability to just say, I want to do something different. Because I'm trying to think, without Gorm, you gotta wait for Leather Shield, you gotta wait for Zimbato, or you have to wait for... On a wait, X. So I, th I think it just sucks that you can't really train your weapon proficiencies until, like, land you can't even start them until, like, land near 5 or 6 with some of those obscure ones. Unless you get really lucky. I guess if someone could get Leather Shield before... Lantern year five. I've never gotten it. I've never seen shield before butcher or leather shield before butcher. Maybe people have gotten it. But it might be possible to speed run that. I will add that it is also nice that um, because he's an alternative to white lion, he still offers you ammonia through his posturing piss AI, which is a really nice touch. Yeah, it's definitely good for early game variety. And man, the wisdom potion is just such an improvement for showdown pacing. It's great. Maybe I overvalued it. A slight amount. Like I said, it didn't score perfect. And these other ones, these were all very close. Even with my point system, Gorm only got a 42. So, like, that's Gorm got a 42. Dung being like got a 41. Sunstalker and Dragon King got a 40. So, I mean, these are like so, so close. That I, I, I mean, you could just say they're all, they're all good. Those top four. For me, they're all very good. Yeah, the gap can be pretty small towards the top. I don't necessarily think, like I said, I don't think I would ever, when Slay was talking about Gorm, I don't think it's a necessarily must-buy. I know some people push it really hard as a must-buy. I don't necessarily think that, I would never recommend mm -hmm. someone include it right away. I am I I find the value of it increases the more you find yourself playing Kingdom Death because you want to try something new. Like, it's not very often you want to go Lantern Year 1 with a Rib Blade or something. So very subjective. <laughs> um... Just to wrap this up, for do you do you think these are reflective of how you would purchase? I just said with Gorm, I don't know if I think if you did any of my top four, it's fine. Even the top six would be fine as your first purchase. I wouldn't purchase this. Does not reflect purchase order, in my opinion. Um, I think it's subjective. No, I think yeah, you should definitely play core before you even begin to buy expansions. Yeah, I definitely do a bit of research before buying expansions. Yeah, none of my lists <laughs> is recommended buying order. Except maybe Dragon King and Sunstalker, they're pretty good. They're always a great choice for first choice, but other than that, no, you wouldn't 
go for Lion God or Speedy Glees early. Yeah, um, I can say that there is this like point mid game in core only where it feels like the game could use a touch of variety. So throwing in one extra quarry around like I don't know year twelve or something might be okay. Um, I think when we played, we were feeling a touch of uh, needing the variety, and we picked an expansion at random. It's not a good strategy, but it kind of worked for us, but not a good strategy. Now, um, you guys both mentioned about CE. Yeah, so of course, got to mention that we playtested some non-final versions, and Community Edition is still working on like actually finalizing those changes and doing more testing. As soon as we finish this 1.6 update, update patch, which should be probably out by the time anybody's watching this video. The Lion Knight Showdown is actually good. It's difficult, the incentives are fixed, it actually tells a good story. It's like, it's great. <laughs> mm, the showdown's been improved, but more than just a showdown, the victory conditions have been changed so that you don't feel bad for playing it out the correct intended way, as you should be. Yeah. And then maybe another area we can probably grab the, say, Flower Knight. Mm -hmm. um, we made the replica Flower Sword and the Flower Knight Helm craftable. Updated their abilities a little bit. And they're a lot of fun to use in the crafting recipe scene balance. We're trying to make Showdown actually difficult and close out a lot of the expl exploits. So fit in with the rest of Kingdom Death. Then. On top of that, we also have changes to Speed Eclipse for the negatives that I've mentioned mostly. Mostly we've worked with the armor so far, haven't really touched the other gear yet. The armor is looking good from our tests, we'll just have to see what everyone else thinks about it. Uh, Taken has been fixed, uh, recipe changes for some of the level 3 gated stuff, and those are the most prominent community edition changes so far to the expansions that we have dealt with. I know that there's some gear updates intended for the Dragon King and the Lion God. And then we've got a probably other more proposed ideas that need to be uh, Ideas of difficulty and Manhunter, but not sure if that's going to be passed through yet. Yeah, our primary proposal was to bump up the toughness a little bit, toughness, and then yeah. to nerf the reverberating lantern slightly. We made the Flower Knight have bonus luck if you attack him from anywhere outside of his bind spot. Representing oh. in parry your attacks. So that puts a natural counterbalance on your luck values Unless you're willing to get up close and personal. Yeah, step into the ring. Yeah, so there's a lot of gear changes. Replica flower sword being craftable from a level 3. Replica flower helm as well. Those are great gear additions. Alright, well this was super fun. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, thank you for taking the time to do all this. <laughs> I know it takes a little bit of time to do all the rankings and everything. So thank you so much. Thank you for taking time to join me late in the evening for some early afternoon for others. Yeah, uh, lots of fun. Thanks for organizing this. Yep. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yep. And I, like I said, I look forward to doing more uh, discussions when the perfect topic comes up. Uh, maybe we'll do a hype video. <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah, there are some definite changes I'm looking forward to that would definitely max, uh, mix up my list here. So... Thank you so much, and I look forward to the next time.